Welcome back to the Buckeyes Dave Wells. From September 21st to October 12th of 2024, I would be taking place on the Willard Sub and the Toledo Sub from Galatea, well, Fanny Willard, Deschler, Willard, and Toledo Sub. We're also going to check out Lima too, but we didn't see anything in Lima. Main reason why, because we thought I and O was going to go south, but I think we missed them. Anyway, this is M209 from the radio that you heard from my scanner. Heading westbound, heading towards Louisville, Kentucky. Nothing too crazy on the latch up. But we do have quite a few good latch ups that we do have coming our way on the 21st of September. This is basically the first weekend. Doing well fitting along Galtia until sometime two in the afternoon we would move to Deschler. But then after Deschler we go out to Amazing Pain for dinner Let's get started, 209 westbound on Gary. This will be our next train after checking out signals from Galatea and we just drove around and see if we would see any signals for 131 southbound on the Toledo branch. Didn't really see anything besides seeing an eastbound signal for 166. 166 comes out of Bensonville, Illinois to Buffalo, New York. And then after Buffalo, it'll change into the interchange on the, the CP. I don't know what type of line it goes on to, but I know it goes all the way to Montreal after um, Buffalo. <laughs>
nothing fancy with the drone footage. Just me getting some smooth. Nothing too crazy on the last ship before IO-18. We should have another train after this, which would have some very special units. For IO-18, it didn't work on Baltimore. Yeah, I thought it did this morning, but it never did. So it just went straight for the yard, didn't even pick up, drop off. I don't know if they've been working there a lot lately, but I know this time they did it. Ah yes, CP7020, Army Template, that one has been the second time that I have seen it. I've seen it lead with an executive Mac, but I had a shaky ass video. This time I got a very smooth one, but it was trailing. I was hoping for it to be leading, but they wove a NSF-9 leading. Which is fine though, because NS doesn't come through here. At no Unless they're more power, but most likely it's a CSX. After we catch this B44 here at No Baltimore, Calcia, we make our way west to Deschler. That's going to be our home point for the rest of the day. Sand train B454 with 
70-20 trailer. Now, fun fact about that real quick, 70-20 was the first ever locomotive on CP's roster that I've ever seen. Seeing a coal train going straight south for Deschler. Most of the time they go for Faustoria, not Deschler. Unless it's the Coke Express, then yeah, I can say that. But sometimes there is coal trains that one on the Willard, west to east, it's not the Toledo. And there's been a lot of that lately on the Toledo. Mostly it's from Curtis, Indiana to Corbin, Kentucky. This one is definitely coming out of the Toledo Dock to Corbin, Kentucky. It's, what's kind of weird about it is that GE is the only locomotive on the train that's pulling this train. So that's a little weird. That's like a two mile like coal train or a mile and a half full train. And it's, it's pretty long with just one engine. I mean, this is just empty. If it was a loaded coal train, then they would have two in the front and then have one at the rear. But just one engine for one empty coal train. waiting to see a signal to flip to a clear but then we see this an approach but then we are waiting then it flips to a clear there it goes right now that is for X561 coming out of Buffalo New York or Willard I have no idea where it came from I'm assuming Buffalo and it's heading down towards Cincinnati, Ohio, Queen's Gate Yard with a flared SD70 trailing third out of three. Taking the Y to go south on the Toledo subdivision. <laughs>
might just get before this one. This is a C631 heading to Curtis, Indiana. I have unknown where it came from, but I know it's coming from the east. Probably took the connection at Fostoya, probably from the south. So I'm gonna guess Corbin, Kentucky to basically all the way to Curtis, Indiana. That's the only guess I got so far. But man, this crew on this C631 was friendly as heck. He was giving orange shows to all of us to the park here at Main Street. So basically, we got in a pretty good horn salute, but then my friend George's car, he flew the horn alive. Beat us up then heading to Los Angeles. It's got a long, long way to go. Soon. This is just his first journey, so it's got a long drive to go. C631 and 171 crew has been awesome. I don't know if it's because we're all out here for this specific train, but I just know that the crews were awesome. 
The Coxes was also very, very shocking to us too. It had a BNSF leading, and then an NS Ace, and then a C6M. I don't know why everyone was freaking out about it, but it's still good. It's a good concept still. Our next train that we will be waiting for is B241, heading to Tampa, Florida. Not gonna say the concept just yet, you're gonna have to wait and speak for yourself. This is CSX B241, it's a loaded potash train, would be heading down to Tampa, Florida sometime in around a few days, but right now it's here in Deschler. What's leading it would be shocking to all of us, because we have not seen a CN Heritage Unit leading since 2023 of August. It's been quite a bit since we've seen a heritage unit from CN leading on CSX as well. Unless it's that local from Lang Yard to Walbridge. about going to Lipsick, but then James, my buddy, 
crew was chasing it was me, thinking we weren't going to make it to Leipzig, so we decided just to stop it here and like go back to Deschland and chill. But this would actually be ending our day here on the Toledo Dub till October 12, 2024, we'd be back out, basically back out to the Willard and Toledo. start to our day on October 12, 2024, be back out to the Willard and the Toledo, we get a train race at 7 a.m. This is just our starting our day. So basically, we catched 168, gonna work on Baltimore on go straight through while 166 would have to go into the yard and work. So basically they won't waste for long until they get to Hoytville. After Hoytville they'll have to split off their journeys and then 166 has to go to the yard. But with a waste, that was pretty cool. Especially we just got here at Deschler. Like maybe like three minutes ago before it is trains made it well. on the weather sub we come back to the Toledo sub while we're waiting for a northbound to not be waiting for a crew at Marion Street it ended up finding out there was a crew in there they just been sitting there for the past like few hours now this is the time they get to leave this is C8 87 heading to Curtis, Indiana to interchange with CN. 
after they get the interchange done, they unload and then get back to Corbin, Kentucky. <laughs> So, we were trying to go to Lima, but then we um, see a northbound on the Toledo. We are north of Lipsick, and then we saw it going through. So we turned around and then came back over here to South Deschler. The only problem is that line 2 is trailing. I wish that line 2 was like beating instead of that line 3 AC44. But it's whatever. We would make it to Lima, but we didn't see anything. We did get some lunch at Arby's in Ottawa, Ohio. But then we see B852 heading southbound. It was going by Deschler like an hour later. After the hour later, it shows up here at Ottawa.
Friday caught the A52 at South End, Ottawa. We get a clear signal for a northbound. So we decided just to make it back to South Deschler and just shoot whatever this is at South Deschler. It's kind of like side lit, but it's whatever. Whatever we can work with. We did not expect a flare Mac to be on it. Or I we didn't know what type of Mac it was. We thought it was like a normal Mac. But it ended up being a flare Mac leading on M508 heading to Detroit, Michigan. to depart before 1.15 went by Deschler, it would have a very special Heritage unit being as a mid-DPU, I've seen it before, it was around 2 o'clock or 2.20 a.m. when I saw it, I'm not going to show you that footage because that footage is going to be coming out soon in this channel, but I just don't know when. Anyway, the unit that is being as a mid DPU is the Seaborg Coastline 1967. Yup, that one.
115. Basically, once 115 went by here at Deschler with the Seaboard Coastline and 508 ended up getting a signal to go take the Northeast Y to get onto the Willard. Once he gets to Bostoya, however, he'll take the um, East North Y to go through um, Bostoya. The Pepperville stuff. What cool is about it is we saw this one twice. We saw it in South Deschler and now here in town at Deschler. So we basically seen it twice. But it's nice to see a flare mag leading on a float freight once in a while. Especially at that point, I didn't really see one. I saw one trailing on X5. 61 the one time the one weekend when we saw the BC well yeah that was the weekend that we saw a flare max swelling now we saw one leading
What? A Winchester Western on M353 with a mag leading? That is crazy lash up right there. So basically, once we caught M508, we basically got a signal for 353. I didn't know it was coming until we saw the gate going down and saw it around the corner. But anyway, that was a sweet flash. James literally thought it was like going to be like a like the Pierre Maquette Heritage unit, but it wasn't. It was the Winchester Western GP Hunter. So I'm still flying a drone. We get it restricting for 511 or 561. I did not record that one because it was just going to be all junk power anyway. In the meanwhile, I flew under the CPL tower and flew by the CPL. That's face north. Anyway, once I got that with that recording on 511 and and whatever we basically heard a horn on Willard and it would end up being a SD70M player leading I-191 heading to Chicago where it interchanged with Union Pacific <laughs>
M561 comes out of Buffalo, New York to Cincinnati, Ohio, Creamsgate Yard. It basically works other yards along the way, like Cleveland and then Willer. I don't think he works Lima, but I think sometimes he works like the more yard. But anyway, it's nothing too crazy in a lash up. Besides some 80 furters like the Conwell one and Jesse one, those are classic. Absolutely classic. Another Conwell one. You don't see a whole lot of 86 footers box cars anymore. Unless you go up to the arches where the one train ones with them. But yeah, basically, you don't really see a whole lot of them. Unless you get lucky of seeing one. A whole bunch of them. Another fake bonnet! Yay! I don't think this is the first fake bonnet that we've seen, but it's another good consist with some BNSF on it. This is 171 heading the BNSF interchange at Chicago, and then once it gets into Chicago, it's basically going into LA, La Angeles. So it's got a long way to go still. But anyway, that's four out of five had a fake bonnet trailing four out of five. So that's that's a big crazy. And they're all elven style too, I noticed. So basically we all had BNSF tell that fake bonnet. Fake bonnets are really cool, but they're kind of common in this area because most of the BNSF trains do have once in a while, it is cool to see one, but I just don't come out here much in Deschler to see them, so it's kind of cool. Basically, the end of the day, these are the last two trains that we captured and saw for the West of the Bay. We better make it our way back north home. But, I will say, we did stop at Ways and Canes on the way home too, so that was some good food that we ate before we made our way home. This is a Athenol train heading westbound out of Willard with two Union Pacifics in the lead. 
and the eastbound and immortal is 116 heading to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. It's still got a long way to go. No idea where this astronaut's going. Probably Chicago to interchange with the Pacific. Probably go out west to there. very much for watching. We had a very fun time with these two weekends. One on the 21st of September and October 12th. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the Michigan or State or the Buckeye State Wells.